Welcome to the Firewater Review, a weekly podcast dedicated to whiskey reviews. On this week's episode, we will be reviewing Woodenville Whiskey Company's Cask Strength Straight Bourbon Whiskey. These fine samples were sent to us by our lovely guest, Mr. Tony Friend. I am your host, Seth Brown. I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, Aaron Cave. How's it going, gents? Going great. It's going awesome. Thanks for joining us, Tony. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Well, thanks for the samples. That's uh, very generous of you. Yes. Yeah, you actually sent both of us, I think, quite a few samples. I think I had like six or seven, and we were going back and forth on what to actually review. And thankfully, I held on to all of your samples and prep for a show. As I did not. I drank through <laughs> like three of them. So, <laughs> Well, that's good news for me now because now I can just drink the rest of them. There you go. Yep. So, yeah, thanks for coming on, Tony. Yeah. Pleasure. So you've been on the Bourbon Daily. You've been on a few of those shows, haven't you? Yeah. Um, I've been on probably five or six of them, plus one that Steve lost. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, I know, I know you've been on at least four because I was on those four with you as well. And then you tack on a couple more to hear you on now and then. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself. How'd you get into whiskey? So I've been drinking bourbon for a little over three years now, but I didn't really get serious about it until this year, um, probably January, February, when I found uh, the Bourbon Daily, actually, and the whole Instagram community. So before, I was probably drinking just like uh, Maker's Mark, um, Eagle Rare. I had a selection of maybe 20, 30 different bottles, but I really didn't know what I was doing until I found the communities and found all the different kind of bourbons that are out there, the rare releases and the local stuff. And it just kind of fell down the rabbit hole. So have you always been a, uh, a fan of podcasts? This is actually my first podcast I've ever listened to. Oh yeah. Yep. Wow. So what was it about the, the bourbon daily that sucked you in? I was just getting tired of music at the time. There was nothing really interesting to me. And I came across a post. Um, I like somebody's Facebook, hey, or um, Instagram. And they said, hey, come check out this show, Bourbon Daily. So uh, tuned in, heard about the, I believe it was Booker's was one of the first episodes. Okay. And yeah, I was just hooked after that. So when you heard that episode, did you go out and buy a bottle of Booker's and try it? Yeah, I actually bought a bottle of Booker's and Colonel E.H. Taylor for my friend's birthday. Man, you just went all at it then. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. a, you just trial by fire. <laughs> so I, I guess we could accurately say that the ABV network shows have caused you to lose money. Uh, but gain friends. Oh, yeah. <laughs> gain a lot of friends. Spent a lot of money, but uh, got a lot of booze here now, so I'm happy. Hey. Well, I, you know what, your selection there in Washington is pretty, pretty phenomenal. So when we did the, the best bourbons in uh, your hometown or your town you're living in, that those bottles you're listing that you could just go to the store and pick up. I mean, Elijah Cream Barrel Proof, you know, Stag Junior, that, that, that just blew my mind. Yeah, we have a pretty good selection up here. Yeah. Um, this is my first kind of hunting season, so I'm, I've picked up a pretty good amount of bottles so far, but I'm seeing what we're going to get this uh, winter. Yeah. Do you find yourself stopping in every store that you pass? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you also have like that main store that you go to weekly that, you know, you try to, you know, buddy, buddy with the manager or. Or, I did. Know, I did staff. have one for a while, but they started to raise their prices, and then I I kind of had most of everything on their shelf. So I started looking around, and I found another one actually that had a slightly better selection, and uh, I've been stopping in there pretty regularly. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Have you met the manager and talked to him and kind of let him know that you're a big bourbon fan? And not yet, but. Um, I don't think she's much into bourbon at all. Oh, okay. I ran into another bourbon guy there, and um, 
he's showing her uh, or she's showing him some stuff in the back they just got she's like i don't know what it is and but i came uh, out and talked to him and he said oh yeah they have a pretty good selection here i got some mictors um 10 year rye one time so oh good yeah prior to getting into it the way you have right now the way you are right now uh, you know, back in your, your maker's days and things like that, were you drinking it straight or were you mixing it or doing a little I would both? Start off, I would start off straight and then uh, usually just mix uh, makers with Coke. Gotcha. Yep, kind of easing my way into it. So would you say, what, like over the past year, you've really noticed a difference in your palate? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just from March. March, I pretty much started drinking straight. 99% of the time and uh, just exploring these different bourbons. I've, I've, I've been able to pick out some notes here and there finally. So I'm getting up there. So what was That's the, good. what was the first aha moment as far as picking up notes and things like that? It was a four roses, um, OBSF that actually Aaron tried the other day. Oh, um, I, was, I got some candied oranges out of it. So nice. You know, I remember the first thing that, that I picked up too, and it just so happened to be a Four Roses as well, and it was it was leather. Like, it really shot out at me. Uh, it was on the finish, and, you know, it's just like, wow, that's that's what it is. And then it just kind of gets bigger and bigger. <laughs> yeah, I listened to a lot of you guys' shows and uh, try to drink along and listen to the notes you guys uh, pick out and try to memorize them and see if I can pick them up myself. It was fun. Good. Yeah, very yeah. good. That's what we like to hear. And now, yeah, now here you are drinking with us. <laughs> so that's that's great. So yeah, the the sample that Tony sent Aaron and myself uh, was the Woodenville Whiskey Company, or one of the many samples that Tony sent us was Woodenville Wh- Whiskey uh, Cast Strength Straight Bourbon, and uh, this particular one is sixty point nine six percent ABV, which comes out to what, like one twenty one twenty one point nine two. Sounds like some of our early scores that we would get. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, actually, I'd never heard of Woodenville until Tony mentioned it just in an Instagram uh, message. Uh, we were going back and forth uh, with each other and he had mentioned it. And, um, you know, I'm always up for trying new stuff. So I'm very thankful that you sent this stuff to me. But, I, you know, you living out there in the area where this is produced, I didn't know if you and Aaron kind of wanted to tag team. Aaron typically, you know, gives a little background on the distillery and what it is that we're drinking. But with you being out there, didn't know if you guys wanted to tag team on it or how, how you wanted to do it. Yeah, we can do that. Both of us. We can. Excellent. Well, I will let you all take it over. Tony, go ahead and uh, just kind of give us the rundown kind of when they opened up and, you know, when their first bourbons and rise were uh, available to everyone there in Washington. Yeah, so they started around 2010. Um, I noticed in the stores they had an age-your-own whiskey kit. So it was their white dog, and they had a little mini barrel. And that's been in stores for a while, obviously, because they didn't have any age product at that time. But they released their five-year flagship bourbon in 2015, and the year after, in 2016, their 100% straight rye. And this fall, they released their cast strength bourbon and rise. So they're they're branching out here. Nice. Yeah, and and that's what we're drinking tonight is the cast strength. And um, so when you first messaged me about what we're drinking tonight, this was a pretty pretty awesome uh, concept to me. Can you go through and just kind of explain kind of what they did and how you were able to get these bottles? Yeah, so they were they were. Um, hyping this up for quite a while. Um, so they had an actual bottle your own cast strength bourbon and rye release. They had three different barrels. You could um, taste all three of them. Um, you can pick two and purchase two. And if you brought a friend, you can obviously buy more. So you get to pick your two favorites, whatever one you want. And um, bottle is straight from, straight from the barrel. No filter, nothing. That's awesome. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And then after those, you were done bottling those. Did they, you did you say they blended what was left? 
Yeah, so they had a fourth barrel in reserve in case one of the three barrels ran out. And after the weekend of the bottle your own, they took that fourth barrel with the leftovers from the other three and uh, blended it into a small batch and released that. That's pretty cool. So I uh, got lucky, got to talk to um, Ariel, who's one of the employees there, and she kind of gave me a little bit of the history and how things, how the distillery runs and their mash bill and that kind of stuff. So their mash bill is, uh, they do uh, 72% corn, 22% rye, and 6% smoked barley. Um, I knew I liked it for a reason. Yeah, it's it's a higher <laughs> rye, that's for sure. Um, it's all local grain. It all comes every part of their grain mash bill, corn, barley, and rye all come from one local farm. They source from there in Washington, which is pretty awesome because not that many, awesome. not, not many farms can do rye. Yeah. Uh, so that's, uh, that's pretty cool. And then what I love is they come off the still at 140, you know, the big boys, they come off the still 160, you know, to get max production. Mm-hmm. They come off at 140 and they're bottling at 110. So, uh, they're not adding as much water and they're, uh, you know, bot- bottling at a lower proof, which I love. And they're all their bourbons are at least five years. So they let the stuff age, you know, up until, uh, it gets to somewhat of a good maturity. You know, they're not releasing a two or three year that, um, you know, isn't a good product. You know, they're, they're waiting until it matures. They, uh, they let their oak season for 18 months out in the open, which is kind of nice before uh, barreling and getting it charred. What else do I have here? Um, they recently just uh, upped their still. They were they did have a thousand uh, liter still. Uh, now they're using a, I think it's a five thousand. Uh, so they've upped their production, which is very good. Anything else you want to add? Yeah, I actually didn't know they were only sold in Washington until I heard about the purchase from, um, uh, what is it, uh, Hennessy Moet? Moet? Yeah, yeah, Hennessy uh, purchased them, yeah, so only Washington, and uh, I mean, they're looking to expand, definitely, and they, I'm sure they will with the, with the purchase and getting some extra cash flow in. That's pretty impressive to be, mm-hmm. you know, to really only have their, their flagship uh, product to be five years old and to be in business, what'd you say, 2010? So for seven years mm-hmm. and already have been purchased. That's yeah. um, that's really saying something. So is it pretty widely available? Like, I mean, can you walk into pretty much any store out there and they'll have yep. a Woodenville product? Yep. Yeah, I thought they were national because they're they're all over the place here, but uh, apparently they're only in Washington. So, hmm. interesting. So you mentioned they had a, a white dog product that you could, uh, you know, I guess barrel your own kit. I think you mentioned. Did you ever try doing anything any any of that with them? No. When I first saw that back in 2010, I wasn't really into bourbon and whiskey back then, and I thought, oh, well, if I buy it, I want to drink it now. I don't want to wait. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, that would be my issue if I were a distiller. Yeah. I would have no product. A couple other little side notes. Uh, they are using 53-gallon barrels, and uh, they do use a number four char as well. Yep. Excellent. All right. I'm ready to, to drink this. Yeah, um, I've been, been itching too. Any, anything else to add? Um, no. I think, uh, I think we pretty much covered it. Excellent. Tony was uh, disappointed, I think, because I told him prior to joining the call that uh, it was we, we only do audio only on this show. There's no video. And Tony was very let down because he had spent a lot of time working on his hair uh, before, before coming on. So I, my apologies for that, Tony. <laughs> All right. Well, let's take a break and sip on this fine whiskey and come back and share our notes.
Welcome back, everybody. In the break, we have been sipping on Woodenville Whiskey Company Cask Strength Straight Bourbon Whiskey. This is a cask strength coming in at, what did we say? It was 121.92 proof, and it is a five-year-old single barrel. And the samples that Aaron and I are drinking are courtesy of our very special guest, Tony Friend. So, per usual format, I will let Aaron kick it off, then we'll let Tony go in the middle, and I'll bring up the rear as usual. Uh, Tony, I was going to ask, I don't know that we hit on the price of these, or did we? No, we didn't. It's around um, 55 bucks. Okay. Cool. MSRP, yeah. Cool. And seven 750 milliliter bottle? Yes. Excellent. All right, cool. Thank you, sir. All right, Aaron, take it away. All right, so um, on the nose, right off the bat, I get uh, some uh, sweet cherries uh, and some raisins kind of hit me first. Uh, then some light toffee, a little brown sugar. Definitely get some maple syrup uh, in there. Nice little uh, black pepper, uh, hints of cinnamon and nutmeg. A little bit of mint and uh, some charred oak. And just a touch, I mean a touch of leather. The palate. Uh, super creamy. It is uh, the palate's great. Uh, vanilla, maple syrup, burnt sugars. Uh, get a little bit of chocolate. Uh, get some more cherries. Uh, some dried dates, cinnamon. Definitely get some nice rye uh, spice in there. Get a little bit of uh, that black pepper. Um, hints of oak and uh, get a little touch of leather on the uh, back end there. And then on the finish. Finish is long. It sticks with you. Um, it's uh, a lot of cinnamon, toffee, uh, some charred oak, and cherries, and it is. Uh, it's a dry finish. That's for sure. It, it want, you want to after you take a sip, it, it sticks with you, but it's dry, and you want another sip. Yeah, I, I dig it. I like it. Uh, I thought it was a solid pour. Uh, a lot of stuff going on. I gave it an eighty-eight. Sweet, nice, love it. I think they're doing things right up there in uh, Washington. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is all their own distillate too. Yep. No, no sourcing involved. Awesome. All right. So an 88 for Aaron. Jot that down. Hopefully we won't have to do too much hard math at the end of this. All right, Tony, take it away, brother. All right. So I'll leave it up to the pros for the, uh, the real notes here, but, uh, for me, I'm horrible on the nose. All I taste is, or all I smell is bourbon. <laughs> it's a good smell. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. No, but on the palate, it's really spicy, which is what I like. Um, I get some peppery notes in there, and it just coats my mouth. And just a super long finish, like Aaron said. And, you know, it just hits all the right notes for me. I think I'm going to have to give this one probably an 88 as well. Cool. Oh, I like that. Yeah. That's good. I like that review too, Tony, because there's no right or wrong way to do this. I think people yep. get kind of kind of nervous about it, but it's it's really it's what you smell and what you taste, and there's no right or wrong answer. Oh yeah. Cool. All right. So you said an eighty eight as well. Excellent. All right. So an interesting thing for me, after I open this up, oddly enough, the first thing I got was hints of pine. Don't know, Aaron, you mentioned mint. I don't know if that's mm -hmm. what I was confusing there. I'm not sure. But when I revisited it after, you know, letting it sit for a little bit, the syrup, it was like pancake syrup, really yeah. jumped out at me. Uh, so that was that was very inviting on uh, the revisit for me. A lot sweeter on that revisit. It's not overpowering. You would think for 121.9 proof that you would get a lot more alcohol on the nose, but that's, that's really not there. It's, it's just a great, well-rounded nose. I was picking up a little bit of uh, citrus, some very light toasted marshmallow caramel, uh, hints of chocolate, uh, some light nutmeg and brown sugar. The oak is there, but it's not overpowering, especially for a, a cask strength. Uh, just just a great inviting nose. Um, the palate, it's got a great mouthfeel uh, with a with a good Kentucky chew. Uh, it gets even more oily for me. Uh, the nice cinnamon spice, uh, very bright, very enjoyable. Mm -hmm. uh, had a lot of flavor on the palate. 
uh, get uh, some oak. Again, it's not not overpowering. I kind of found it to be the right amount. Uh, there's a nice, rich, dark chocolate to it. Uh, some more caramel, sweeter tobacco notes, uh, flavors, and uh, just a little bit of leather there on the palate. Finish, I, I found it to be long too. Uh, it starts off almost a little soft, but then there was like this big burst of cinnamon and red pepper spice mm-hmm. that comes in and uh, really lingered on for, for quite a while, just hanging out on the top of my tongue. And uh, that settles down a little bit, getting uh, little hints of citrus in there again. Got a nice kind of creme brulee flavor to it there for a little bit. Uh, a little bit of vanilla, sugar again, and uh, the leather leather and uh, sweeter tobacco on the very tail end of it kind of finished it off really nice. Uh, just a, I found it to be a very enjoyable cask drink bourbon. Very inviting, just not overpowering. Uh, Honestly, I, I didn't think of it as being a, a cask strength. Uh, it's just, you know, there was a right amount of flavor to it, right amount of spice. And uh, I'm on the high end this time, guys. I'm giving it a 90. Oh, I love it. All right. That's an 88.66. Almost as odd as the proof. Yep. Yep. That is, uh, it's a solid pour. And I actually I went back and forth between an eighty eight and nine uh, eighty eight and eighty nine and it's uh, yeah it's 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 a good solid pour and like I said you know I tried it and I think I I went through three samples and I had asked Tony if he could get me a, a bottle of it so it, it's it was worth that much to me to get get a a bottle or two or three. <laughs> so you know whatever yeah it's uh solid bourbon and uh they're doing things right for sure locally sourced grains distilling right you know proofing it down right going into the barrel right they're just they're, i think they're hitting it all really good and i hope they keep it up with these uh high proof uh single barrels because uh it's it's really a cool concept, you know, go in and bottle your own bourbon. That's, that's pretty neat. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's, I, I wish a distiller around me would do that. Cause I mean, that's, that's the first time I've ever even heard of anything like that. That's a pretty, I, you know, for me, I, I'm like, that'd be freaking sweet just to go in and, you know, I mean, what, pretty much what they do is they tap the keg and, uh, just go in and pour yourself your own, bottle that's you know i think that's what a lot of these craft distilleries are are gravitating to you know having more of an experience like that Mm -hmm. Uh, because you know you you have to think they're in washington so not a whole lot of people from washington state are probably getting to kentucky for the bourbon trail tours and things like that so why not I mean, that's even the case here in Atlanta. I mean, the the smaller distilleries are trying to create more of an environment, more of an experience uh, for not only just the whiskey, but for events, too, that yeah. are revolving around whiskey. Uh, so it's really it's, it's really great, a great time to be getting into whiskey if you can if you can do it. And I think with them getting the money from uh, the Hennessy company that there's no reason why they can't continue doing what they're doing. And just killing it. So yeah. it, you know, it's it's funny that you you're talking about that that experience um, that these you know smaller distillers are doing. Um, we're here in uh, Columbus. Our two bigger smaller distilleries have gravitated more to uh, restaurant and bar in the distillery. Oh. Are you guys seeing any of that? Not specifically that. Uh, Now, I know that is a concept that a lot of the craft breweries were doing. Uh, Mm -hmm. Stone brewing, stone brewing, brewing, I'll get it right here in a minute. Uh, And Dogfish Head, uh, you know, they were doing similar things like that and have been doing them for quite a while. So I think the the distilleries kind of seem to be, you know, latching on to that concept too. Yeah. uh, So, yeah, we... uh uh, Watershed Distillery and uh, Midwest Spirits both now have a bar and kitchen in in the actual distillery, and um, I mean, and they're not serving up just hamburgers. They're like really good, you know, 
menus that you can go in, have a nice sit down dinner. You could go do a tour, have a nice sit down dinner, get a really good cocktail if you wanted to. Or I mean, it's 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 a pretty cool experience going in now. What about out there in Washington? Are you seeing that Tony at all anywhere? Uh, I haven't seen it yet, but I know at Westland you can. I think you can also bottle your own. And uh, yeah, I think that's the only other one I've been in recently. So cool. Yeah, and I would go out on a limb and say there's not many distilleries out there that are getting all their grains from the same place and it being oh, that, that's for that, sure that local. And I think that's that kind of super where, unique. Yeah, 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 it is. And I think that's where states like Washington kind of have the upper hand because they have varying climates yeah. to where they can do that. Where, you know, like in Georgia, you can get some of it, but you're not getting, you know, you're not getting the the, the harder to get uh, barley and yeah. things like that around here. So, yeah, that's, I, I think that's really cool. I didn't know that. Very interesting. Yeah, that was uh, when when they, they told me that when I was talked to them, I was like, everything, right? So like corn, rye, and barley. And they're like, yep. And I was like, wow, that's, that's pretty much unheard of, you know, yeah. from one, one local farm. You know, there's, there's a lot of them that'll get the, the corn and rye, but then most have to go up to, you know, Wisconsin and things like that for, for the barley and the, the more cooler season. Oh yeah. 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 Well, yeah, I mean, you look at wild Turkey. I mean, I'm sure their corn and rye is somewhat local, but they're, uh, I can't remember if it's the barley or the rye that they get from overseas because uh, they if they want like the best yeah and uh, one of them comes from overseas but uh, I can't remember which one one of them yeah yeah I actually had a question for you guys yeah so their barrel wood is seasoned uh, for eighteen months beforehand is that a mm-hmm. common practice. It is. Uh, almost okay. all the big distilleries season the staves before they're barreled. They sit out for, it's anywhere between like six and 24 months. I, it's, it just varies distillery, but uh, distillery, distillery. I don't know. Honestly, off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you. Well, then a lot of them are does experimenting what, but, with it too. You know, like mm-hmm. the Buffalo Trace uh, experimental. Uh, releases you know a lot of that has to do with the the, not only the the drying process of the wood but just the the location of the wood that the stave was taken from the location of the tree how big the tree was all that that sort of stuff but um yeah i mean if uh, i think all of them well all of them do let them let the wood dry it would just be you know way too wet and i think there would be way too much oak uh, imparted into the whiskey if they didn't let it dry for uh, usually around six months, I think is, mm-hmm. is kind of the minimum, but yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a, uh, a very common process. Okay. What else, man? Anything else? I don't know. I'm, I'm still nosing this <laughs> and I'm, I, that, that maple syrup on the nose is really, really killing it now. Yeah. Man, I can, yeah, that's, that's good stuff. Yeah, I just finished mine. Yeah, it's it's definitely good. Are there a lot of people doing private picks from from Woodenville, like uh, stores actually doing that? No, they actually had their first private pick um, with this release of the bourbon from uh, Bob's Liquors, um, and Aaron has a bottle of that actually. I do, and you're going to have a sample whenever you go pick it up from work. <laughs> means I have to actually go into the office. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's all right. Cool. So th- there's only been one so far. Yep. First one. Nice. Right, I can't wait to try it now. Yeah, it's a great pour. So is Bob's Liquor a big store? I actually never heard of it until I found um, found someone on Instagram saying, hey, there's a store pick of this. And I said, what, where? And uh found the place. It's... It's medium size. Um, we don't have a lot of huge stores around here besides the, the big guys. There's some great bars up there, though. Yeah. Yes. What's your favorite one? I actually don't go out a lot to bars, but if you've listened to the Bourbon Daily recently, we had a contest. Um, I'm headed to Cannon in a couple weeks, and I've got 350 bucks to spend. 
that that could buy you one drink there. It could. Did listen to that show, and um, I mean, they they all had they all had really good uh, suggestions. Um, at Jeremy Shell had I I would probably would have gone towards his uh, as well, but I I will tell you what that wild t- turkey tribute that Chris, Chrissy was talking about one of the best pours I have ever had it is phenomenal age 15 years it's I mean my top five that's in my top five for sure if I had a chance to to get a pour of that I, I definitely would just to let you know and I would venture to guess that Canon would have it yeah they were going off their uh, menu for this contest yeah uh, okay Nice. Well, yeah, that tribute is phenomenal. That episode yet, <laughs> and so is the American Spirit. If they have that as well, that that's another fantastic one. That's uh, Turkey did. Yeah, Cannon's a really cool place. I went out there. I guess it was last year. Yeah, it was last year, last September, almost a year ago, actually. And that place is almost overwhelming, especially if you get the captain's log, which is an iPad. They have. Uh, oh, jeez. Yeah. Uh, the bourbons at the time started on page 70. It was an ebook. And so it was page 70 of the ebook is where bourbon started. And I think bourbons ended on like page 95, 90 or 95 or something like that. And mind you, you know, there's like at least 50 to 75 bourbons per page. I mean, it's just insane how much they have. I mean, they have stuff back, you know, from 1913. Yeah, that's actually what kind of sparked this episode. Um, I was going out with a friend to Canon with 350 bucks, and I had no clue what to get. So I was texting Steve, and he was making some suggestions. And I said, hey, if you you know turn into a show, make it a contest, hear from three different people, I'll go out there and you know pick a winner and uh, celebrate, drink it. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Kentucky Tribute. You need to try that. So I don't know if anyone caught my Instagram post the other day, but Flavia, I picked up a uh, cast strength uh, scotch whiskey uh, tasting. And that was pretty cool, you know, to, to try those, uh, all those cast strengths next to each other. Cause I, I, I do, I do enjoy a nice scotch every once in a while. And, uh, but I always, I gravitate towards the cast strength scotches uh, that are finished in like sherry barrels and stuff. And I've had a few peated ones that I like, but uh, that, that was really cool just to be able to sit down and try three different samples, figure out, you know, if this is something I want to shoot for, you know, something I want to spend my money on or not. So I really enjoyed that. And I'm actually probably going to pick up a couple couple bottles from from that sampling. Nice. Huh, that's cool. I'm looking at it now. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. And uh, one other thing I want to talk about so the month of November, Roundtable Woodworks, we are putting on a little uh, little challenge between me and Steve. We are going to see who can sell the most. Hmm. The bourbon barrel, uh, the bourbon cave tray, or the uh, Steve Akeley. Interesting. So shadow box. So we're going to see which one sells the most this uh, this November. And whichever one sells the most is the winner. And the loser has to contribute to uh, Toys for Tots. So it's, it's good. It's, uh, it's for charity. So yeah. go out there and uh, check out Roundtable. Look for, uh, you know, the Bourbon Barrel, uh, you know, Bourbon Cave serving tray and the Steve Akeley and pick something up. Now, is it dollar amount or individual sales? I'm guessing just individual sales. Because I was going to say, if it's a dollar amount, you'll win. You should. Well, that's if anyone buys it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someday if Chris ever has time, he can make the, the little thing I came up with several months ago. Yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, we're, we're going to have to have him back on soon because he's, I got a couple couple projects in the work that he's working on for for me, so... Nice. Once maybe once one of those are done, we'll get him back on and uh yeah, we'll do that uh uh what did he, he wanted to do the Tom's Flurry bonded. So I think I sent you that. 
yes. samples. So yep. we're good to go with that. And we're, we're going to have Tony, we're going to have you back on to do some more Woodenville because yeah. Seth will have a Seth will have a Bob's liquor. Plus we have these rides to, to go through. Yeah. And I actually just wanted to, uh, or I just got a big package from Roundtable Woodworks today. What'd you get? What'd you get? Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm excited. So I ended up getting the, um, Urban Cave. The, like, right? No. Oh, thank you. <sighs> That's next month. <laughs> get it, get next month. Get it, get it in November. So I got the, uh, the six Glen Cairn display, uh, barrel stave. Mm-hmm. Oh, love I it. Got nice. Four barrel stave coasters with my logo on it. Nice. I got the new Glen Cairn, um, coaster with my logo on it. And I got, let's see, I got four different um, laser etched glasses. And he also etched eight of my um, Glen Cairns that I had on hand. So nice. Nice, man. Put some logos on there. Got, got a Firewater Review Glen Cairn oh, now. Nice. Yeah. I love it. Got to display those Glen Cairns. That's like Christmas in October. I know. Are yeah. you drinking out of that Firewater right now? Yeah. Awesome. Me too. Me too. Look at that. Yep. It's sitting in my uh, little Glen Cairn coaster. Sweet. I didn't know he was doing Glen Cairn coasters. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I I don't think he's put it out there, but he's got a picture on uh, Instagram now of it. All right. He was going to town on the drill press the other day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I saw that. Is that what that was? Were they Glen Cairn coasters? Those may have been the. I don't know. He was doing coasters. I don't know if it was. I did them both. Was it? Okay. Uh, yeah. So there you go. That's that's a good advertisement for Roundtable Woodworks. Check them out. All right. What else? Anything else? Uh, I don't think so. All right. Well, I think we're good. Tony, where can these fine listeners find you? You can find me on Instagram following the ABV network at Glass of Whiskey 86. Mr. Cave. Oh, man. I feel like I'm doing too much these days. Uh, always find me here on the Firewater Review. You can always find me writing for the Bourbon Zeppelin, High Proof Single Barrel Bourbon. Uh, find me writing for the Sons of Winston Churchill. Um, you can also find me on Instagram and Twitter at Bourbon Cave. And I am Seth P. Brown on Instagram and about once per leap year on Twitter. And you can find me on this show, of course. You can find the Firewater Review on Instagram, at Firewater Review. We always forget that. You can find all of our shows on the ABV Network website. That is abvnetwork.com. And you can find all of the shows in iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. You can find this show in all of those, as well as on the YouTubes. That is audio only, no video, as Tony can attest to. Sorry that you fixed your hair again. And we appreciate your reviews. Leave those if you can, if you want. We like your feedback. I think that's it. I got one more thing because yeah, come it. November, a uh, little shout out to Hasseberg. We'll be doing uh, around the world whiskeys again. Yes. Uh, so look for that in November on the Sons of Winston Churchill. Yeah, that'll be coming up oh, pretty close to when this show drops. So, yeah. Yep. Look at them. Uh, that is the son of Winston Churchill. That's at son of Winston Churchill on Instagram and S O W dot Churchill dot blogspot dot com is the website. And again, that is around the whiskey world in seven days. I'll have an article. Aaron will have an article. Uh, our friend Monty will have an article. There's uh, several more, well, four more to be exact. Hey, look yeah. at that. I did math. Yeah, you did some math. Yeah. So, uh, well, if you guys can find some Woodville or have a friend in Washington that can get you some Woodville, uh, I would, I would say go for it. Pull the trigger. We're doing some good stuff. Absolutely. And this was, what did we give it? It was an 89. 88.66. Let's round up. Let's round up. Yeah. 89. 89. 89. Easy math. Yeah. Tony, thanks again for these samples, buddy. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Love to share. Thanks for coming stuff. on. We'll have you back on soon. Until next time. Please drink responsibly and cheers. Later. Peace.
The Firewater Review is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers.